Okay. Um, can we talk a little bit about any updates with uh, this morning's incident? Yeah. Um, you know, it, it was it was 12:30, um, and and Sergeant Gutierrez was was um, just blocking the Tidwell exit on the Beltway, uh, just because he was escorting a massive uh, uh, tractor trailer that, that was going to have to to take its time to turn left. Um, Miss Spry, the defendant in this case, completely disregarded uh, Sergeant Gutierrez's motorcycle and himself in a reflective jacket with a light, with a flashlight, waving her away. Um, at the very last second, he tried to get out, get out of the way. He was on a, he was, he couldn't do it, and and she struck him. She she drug him for quite a while, um, and then just continued on as if nothing happened. Um, we had a we had another one of the deputies who was escorting that that rig, who subsequently chased her uh, for over a mile, was finally able to stop her, brought her back to the scene. Um, she performed really badly on the field sobriety test. We got a search warrant. We took her blood. Uh, I accepted charges on the scene of intoxication, manslaughter uh, of a peace officer. It's a first degree felony. I also accepted failure to stop and render aid resulting in a death, it's a second degree felony, uh, and invading motor vehicle, which is a third degree felony. Um, and just just personally, I, I've known Sergeant Gutierrez for 14 years. Um, he, he was actually the primary officer, the primary deputy on the very first intoxication manslaughter case that I ever went out to in, in 2008 or 9. Um, so I've had a number of former prosecutors that, that come into our world that's, that have reached out today uh, to just kind of express their condolences and, and have us reminisce a little bit about Sergeant Gutierrez. He's, uh, he made an impact on a lot of people's lives over the years. And, and those of us that handle these kind of cases with, you know, the crashes and the intoxication, we're, we're a very small family inside of a very small family of law enforcement. Um, and we lost one today who made an incredible impact on countless people, um, and, and none more so than his his beautiful wife and children. Um, so I got to express some condolences to them today. But you know, I do this I do this for a living. Um, we we meet with people who've lost who've lost loved ones tragically like this all the time. Um, but when it's someone that, that's effectively in your own family, it's it hits even closer to home. Can you tell us a little bit more about Sergeant Gutierrez? Um, you know, what was your relationship with him like? What what was he like as a person? Um, he, he was a great guy. Uh, he was he was always the guy who knew what to do on a scene. Um, he was always the guy that would let you talk about it with everyone else and then at the end would come in and, and tell you, no, it, it needs to be this way. And and honestly, in 14 years, he was never wrong. Um, he's, again, he, he's left an impact on on so many people that, that are called to do what we do and, and called to seek justice for the people who lose their lives um, on the roads. He, he stayed there uh, after he promoted. Um, and just a testament to him from from this morning, um, you know, he's been in the vehicular crimes division of the sheriff's department for for years, um, and the vehicular crimes division of the sheriff's department had to investigate this crash, knowing that that Raymond was either on death's door or already deceased. It was emotional for me. It was incredibly emotional for every single one of them that were working there, but just a testament to how professional and good that team is. They set it all aside and they checked every box and they did every single thing as best as I've ever seen them do so that Sergeant Gutierrez could get the justice eventually that he deserves and that he gave to so many countless victims throughout the years. Details on, on the crash itself. How, how fast was um, the woman exiting the freeway? And then did he have lights on his motorbike, or what? He did. Um, um, he had he had his full uh, his full set of lights on. Again, he had a reflective vest, a reflective jacket on. Uh, he had his flashlight, and, and his whole 
his whole purpose and job right there was to let motorists know that this exit is not available. You got to go to the next one for a little while. Um, there had been numerous cars who had heeded his warning and not come down that exit. Um, but sadly, Mrs. Spry was too intoxicated to, to pay attention or, or quite frankly, to care. Um, and, and Sergeant Gutierrez is dead because of it. She, he's dead because she acted in an incredibly selfish manner to even turn the key and start the car, but then just continued to act in a selfish manner by deciding she wasn't going to go to the next exit. She was going to drive around the police officer's bike, and he's dead. He's dead because of it, um, and it's it's incredibly frustrating. Was she at a bar before? Do you know what she you know what she was drinking? So that is that is one part of the investigation that we're absolutely still looking into right now. Based on her statements, um, there's no one else that we can hold accountable, meaning she's claiming that she drank at her home. Um, but drunks are notoriously bad historians, so we're going to check. We're going to find out. We've got n a number of ways that we're going to go back in the next day, two days. I, I don't. I don't imagine it's going to take a week to either confirm or deny her story, but however long it takes and if there is anyone else in the chain that we can hold accountable for this senseless death, we're absolutely going to do it. How did she eventually get stopped? Did she just pull over? Or? So she was, uh, there, there were more than just Sergeant Gutierrez that were, um, that were escorting this, this load and the other motorcyclists, the other motorcycle officers uh, pursued and it took them up to a mile. Okay. Uh, 